Between the village of machine life forms and Nine's uh, just almost emotional breakdown, this was another incredible near episode. And the more I watch the show, the more I think about what it means to be alive in a world full of humans, machine life forms, androids, and what gets to live, what gets to die. We're seeing cooperation from Lily and this village. Like, there's just so much uncertainty. And the fact that you end this episode with Nine seemingly about to take a stand when you have these children machines basically fighting over a musical box and he's trying to argue that, of course, they're just, this is what they were built to do. They are built to fight. It's no wonder that they go back to their instincts. But from a human point of view, when we take a step back, that just looks like children getting upset because they want the thing all to themselves. And what it means to be alive is like the big theme, it seems, of this anime. And the complexity of this entire situation gets more and more compelling the more I watch of it. Now, I do have a full live reaction to today's insanely good episode on my Patreon, so... If you want to see my full uncut thoughts to today's episode, head on over there and consider supporting, because seriously, I'm just glad it's back. I don't care if it's back for one episode, two episodes, ten episodes. Just as long as I get to watch a near episode, I'm a happy camper. And just to see this episode progress in this beautiful world that's just so unfiltered. It's so just going back to the way nature would be if humanity didn't have a touch on it. We're seeing a shopping mall get overrun. I thought I was in The Last of Us, I mean, the animals running through, we have Nines picking up a toothbrush and saying, what is this, which, you don't really think much about it, but, you know, the concept of, like, what this small plastic item or wooden item with a little bit of, like, fuzzy bristles, like, what are, what are they using that for? It just doesn't make sense, right? Are they cleaning their eyes with it? Like, it's just, the little moments like those, they all stack together to help immerse you in this world that feels like it's a post-apocalyptic environment. You have invaders coming to your world, making these machine life forms trying to take over, but then you have some of these machine life forms just seemingly being human, like they observe humanity and seemingly have evolved to the point that they literally have their own little village going on. And it's a very complex situation because we as humans, especially with how many stories have written the idea of the rise of machines, it's a fearful idea of what if they become their own creature, their own, they can think from themselves, right? And to see the androids like someone like 2B or even Nines as he wants 2B to call him, but she's not there yet. I like the fact that the whole idea of like just being so upset, right? They were built to destroy how many thousands of her own have they killed, yet they're talking about how many they've lost, right? It's a pretty, it's obviously an intimidating, fearful, not know what to think situation. And you can see every side and perspective when it gets brought up. But I think the thing that has continued to immerse me in this world is not knowing what I should fear and what I should trust. And honestly, everything is probably a bit of both. And I think it's so fascinating to go from a couple episodes back seeing these, these bots just, you know, plant flowers, try to grow flowers before getting completely destroyed in a brutal fashion, to then coming upon a village of them and they're waving the flags. Immediately I'm thinking, well, they're all about to get slaughtered. There's no way Nines is going to be okay. And it turns out that's the delivery spot. Like, they literally found themselves playing Death Stranding as delivery boys in this post-apocalyptic world. And the fact of the matter was, we actually got to talk with them rather than drawing swords. We literally made it most of this episode before Nines was about to throw down. Honestly, that's progress if you ask me. And to see him just so not okay with this situation. Of course, you have characters like 2B, who's more kind of going with the flow, observing and learning what's actually going on. And if she wasn't there, it probably wouldn't have been as peaceful as it mostly was this episode. But when they shift into the flashback style, I love this. Actually reminded me of Trigun Stampede earlier in its anime run this season. So when they were doing flashbacks of Wolfwood, they had like a completely unique art style, this 2D style that was just different color palette. And it really made it feel like a flashback, right? And I think what this show did was exactly that, but in its own way. And I love it, man. Like, just the color palette, the character designs, the way they got across gore for machines. Not to say, like, there was blood and guts everywhere, but when you see, like, a, an army of just dead robots, like, ripped apart, they surprisingly made it feel disturbing despite it not being alive and also it being machine. It was metal bits, right? This, it shouldn't be disturbing. But there was something about seeing... A machine like cry with like oil running down its eye it just it added to that atmosphere and really hit you with that emotional oomph and to just have that tree that just you know I was like man the great Deku tree definitely has seen some better days but it was such a cool design right 
immediately I'm thinking if someone like some company doesn't make like a wall mount whether a sticker that you put on your wall or like a frame of some sort that makes it look like that heads coming out of your wall similar to how the Attack on Titan merchandise has like a lot of those where you can buy it so it looks like a colossal titans coming from your wall it would be a complete missed opportunity on the anime merchandising department. But it's just really cool. The world building is so subtle, but yet it can also be so in your face at times, like in the case of the tree, the leader, and everything like that. But then you just see so many things in the background, and you say, how did that building get like that? How did it get so decayed? Or what was the importance of this? And just to see all that as you're just delivering. That's literally what happened this episode. We were delivery boys and girls, and we delivered some parcels, and we got to experience a village that's full of machine life forms. And to see them argue at the end, like I said at the start of this video, to me, that was the most human behavior I think I've seen from them. There's a good argument to be made about what they're doing, like they're playing dress up, they're goofing off, they're going down slides, they're swinging around like Tarzan. You can make the argument, well, that's just them looking at what humans do and are imitating them. But I honestly think as much as it makes sense to say, well, they were originally designed to kill, so that's just them going back to their basic urges. To me, that felt like the most alive thing we've seen from them, where it felt like they were greedy. They wanted the thing all to themselves, and in doing so, they broke it, and then they lashed out like kids normally would in that situation. And that's, it's frightening, but inspiring to see what a curation could become if left untouched. It's fearful, because obviously anyone who's seen any sci-fi movie can tell you the issue with that. Not only were they originally designed to kill androids and humans and things like that, but just the fact that there's so much uncertainty, but then there's also this sense of beauty of what they could become if left alone. And hell, in this episode, we literally have a human working with them, so there is potential for peace. Maybe not all of them, but we can't have peace with all humans as is anyway, right? Amazing episode for sure. I love what they're doing visually, aesthetically, and just everything of the like. You can have last episode with that crazy boss fight, which was incredible, of course, or you can have a slow burn, thought-provoking episode like this one, and I'm going to eat it all up. I really have no idea where we go from here. Of course, we have Adam and Eve and that entire dynamic, the long table, and just honestly, the whole concept of how they're like taking the biblical references about how like if they ate the forbidden fruit, you know, they like in the Bible and stuff, just there's so much to fear about them like on one hand you want to laugh because you think they're like they're like the weird jojo characters but then we remember what they actually did a couple episodes back so a lot to worry about a lot to be excited about and a lot to think about but i'll pass the torch over to you what did you think of the newest near episode do let me know down below leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new around here ring that bell so you can get notified when i upload on the channel and of course as i mentioned i do have that full live reaction available on my patreon and while you're there you can also get yourself a video shout out so today we have don jaquin the norman Gareth Green, Duckman, Jeff, Ferno 19Z, and Dusk Walker. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.